SketchUp doesn't have primitive objects as such. And most 3D programs that are parametric have a series of primitives, such as box, cylinder, cone, sphere, even rounded box. In 3ds Max, this is called a chamfer box, and it allows you to bevel edges or round them off. It would be nice if SketchUp had such an object, but we have to model it ourselves. And that's not such a bad thing. It's actually a good tutorial that brings in a lot of different elements. So let's go ahead and create this rounded box, or bar of soap, if you will. Start by drawing a rectangle. I'll make it a square. Don't be concerned with the actual dimensions at this point. We're trying to model the form, which we can scale later. Push-pull this rectangle up, forming a box. Draw an arc on one of the faces from some arbitrary point along the vertical edge to a point that's equidistant from the corner, as indicated by this magenta inference. Make the arc tangent to the edge, and then type in 6s, return, to make an arc that has only six segments. Because I've done this before, I know that we're going to need a copy of this arc in a moment. So let's use the Move tool with the Option key to create a copy of this arc somewhere off to the side. Then select the top face, press F for the Follow Me tool, and click this small face between the arc and the corner. This rounds off the edges in two directions, but we're still left with a box that has sharp corners. We can take it to the next level by creating an eighth of a sphere right here in this area. And we can do that using this arc. We'll use the Follow Me tool to sweep out an eighth of a sphere from this arc. To do so, we need to start with a face, so we need to fill in the missing lines. Use the Line tool and draw a line over in the green direction. Lock your inference by holding down the Shift key, and then draw in two segments to complete this little pie shape. Then draw a circle underneath. The size of the circle doesn't matter. This is going to be the follow me path. I would like to set the number of segments in this circle, however. Let's set it to 6 times 4, which is 24. This will give us an eighth of a sphere that has an equal number of segments going up and around. So I'm going to select the follow me path, press F, and click on this face to sweep out a hemisphere. Now, I said I wanted an eighth of a sphere, but I swept it all the way around, and I did that for a reason. If we look at the top view, I'll press J to switch to parallel projection and zoom in here. First of all, I'm going to reverse this face so that the white color is shown, and then I'll view hidden geometry so we can see the internal structure to this thing. Because we had an even number of segments in the arc and in the follow me path, we have a circle that's divisible into four pieces. We can select this, delete, select this, delete. You get far better results using this method rather than trying to sweep out just 90 degrees. Uncheck hidden geometry and go back to the previous zoom. Triple click on the eighth of a sphere to select the faces and its edges. Move it from this upper corner point and place it right where it belongs, right here. Deselect, and then delete these extraneous surfaces that have been cut by that eighth of a sphere. You also need to delete this edge, which is just floating out in space. And you can see that because it's bold. It means it's a profile edge. We're left with this gap here, which is not filled with a face. Draw a line from the corner to this point to heal the face and then use the Follow Me tool to remove this portion. We could repeat this procedure on all eight corners, but a quicker way is to slice this model up into pieces and then mirror it. To do that, let's go over here and make a box off to the side by drawing a large rectangle and then push-pulling it up. Select the whole thing by triple-clicking on one of its faces. Use the Move tool and grab it from some arbitrary point. Press the up arrow to lock the blue axis inference and click on the top face of your object. Now their heights match. Move the box from some point to match up here along this edge. Right click and choose Intersect, Intersect with Model. 
Go into the top view by pressing Command-1, zoom out, and start deleting. We're left with a couple of little pieces there I need to get rid of. OK, let's go back through Zoom Previous. We also need to slice off this portion of the model. So we'll follow the same procedure. Draw a large rectangle off to the side. Push pull it up. Triple click to select. It's helpful to move it in two steps. I'll move it from this top edge down by pressing the up arrow to lock the blue inference. I can come over here and then click on the top of the object to match their heights. Then I can move this over along this edge. Right click. Intersect. Intersect with model. And now I can get rid of the box. And it's sliced through our geometry. It's easiest to select that an orthogonal view, so I'll switch to the top view, press J to go into parallel projection, and delete all this stuff. I'll go back to where I was by pressing Control Z, and we have the portion of the model that we need. I also need to delete some of these faces so that we're left with a hollow representation of the corner. The next step is to use the eraser tool with the Option key held down, to smooth and soften all of these edges. Now all that's left is to put the pieces together. I'll triple click to select everything. Use the Move tool with the Option key to make a copy off to the side. Press S for the Scale tool. Drag this center grip all the way over through the middle until it comes out the other side. You'll see that it pops into place, making it a scale of negative one in the red direction. This has the effect of mirroring the object. There is no mirror tool in SketchUp. Triple click to select all of the geometry. Move it from the corner point over here. We can save some time by softening and smoothing these edges with the eraser tool and the option key held down. Triple click to select everything. Move it down using the option key to make a copy and the up arrow to lock the blue inference. Press S for the Scale tool. Pull it from this grip all the way down through the middle to the other side so you have a negative one scale in the blue direction. Then use the Move tool to move this up. Again, use the Eraser tool with the Option key to smooth and soften the seam. Triple click. Move with Option to copy in the green direction. Press S for the Scale tool. Mirror it around the middle point there. Use the Move tool and move it into position. Finally, use the Eraser tool with Option to get rid of these seam lines through the middle. Triple click to select the whole thing and then you can scale the proportions of the object to suit your situation. You'll learn later how you can save this as a component and use it in many scenes. Now that you've gone through the rounded box tutorial in the previous video, I'm sure you'll appreciate this Ruby script. It's called BZ Round Edge for Bezier Round Edge, and again it's by Fredo6. I'll make a rectangle over here, and push-pull it up to make a box. Triple-click to select the whole thing, and after you have the script installed, it's on the Tools menu at the very bottom. Round Edges by Bezier. You set the distances in here that you want and the number of segments. I'll make a 2-foot rounded edge with 12 segments. I'll smooth and soften and I won't make it asymmetrical by entering a value here. Now in one fell swoop we have a rounded box. The result is a little bit different than our eighth of a sphere method. Here we don't have quite the same curvature on the corner because of the way that it was made with Bezier splines coming from three directions. But that said, it's incredibly fast and easy to use.
You can also apply this script to selected edges. I'll select just these top two edges and do the command on them. And it leaves us with two rounded edges. The corner is also rounded off, but it's still square in plan. It also leaves a short profile here so that you know where the original corner was, and it's up to you to delete that. And then over here, we're left with these little segments that have to be dealt with as well. But overall, a very useful script.